I'm like this, eh? <laughs> this na the height of sea finish. This, as I declare you so now, Delta State Governorship deb uh, debate they go on, and guess what? As usual, PDP and APC candidate not not show up for the debate. That is to say, they big past the people of the state. They're too big to come to come talk to the people they won't govern. When I watch the video, as the other reasonable candidates don't talk their plans for the people of the state, and make sure say you share the video and comment your opinion on how you reason this matter. When I watch the video, and prosperity reigns. The vision, the roadmap simply that goes by enthroning righteousness, righteousness in our land, righteousness in governance. Because one of the biggest problems in Delta is the kind of impunity over the last 24 years that has reigned. And so what we want to do is lay a foundation, a foundation of simply doing the right thing. The right thing in terms of accountability and integrity in governance. The right thing in terms of fairness, equity and justice. Undermine, un underlining everything we do in, in governance. The right thing in terms of eliminating waste and corruption in governance. The right thing in terms of reorientating the values of our people. The right thing in terms of ensuring mass participation of people in governance. We believe that when we enthrone righteousness, we can create harmony. Harmony in terms of peace and harmony, and we will enable this by putting in place security, working on the security architecture of the state to ensure peace and harmony. And by the time we put these two together, we create an environment where prosperity can thrive. Now, we believe that what will underline prosperity is the well-being of our human beings. So we would ensure that we put in place good health care, good education, and we ensure we have good infrastructure across the land. But more importantly, we are not going to leave the prosperity of Delta to chance. We will engender prosperity with eight key prosperity drivers. Deacon Pella, yes. your four minutes is up. Thank wow. you very much. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you for keeping to the rules. No hand claps, no cheering, and no booing. Um, it is now the turn of Chief Kenneth Baggy. Kenneth Baggy, your four minutes starts now. I bring greetings <clears throat> to all of you that is seated here, but more importantly, to the owners and operators of Arise TV for deeming it good and proper to bring this interview to bear. We are in a serious state of crossroad in the state called Delta. My names are Kenneth Omemiwa Bagi. I'm a Deltan from Oginibo, Ugeli South, paternally and maternally from JC. Married with my nine children, living all in the country. My issue is very simple. We have brought Delta to its knees, and the only solution I know can cross this path for us as a people is industry, industry, industry. How do we want to do it? Over 43.4% of all our youths are out of school, out of jobs, and no hope of what happens to them tomorrow. My government is clear. I will eradicate my youths from the street with immediate effect as we take over our governance. But put it very mildly, I do not think that the requirement for being a governor of a state like Delta is a child's play. I was once the chairman of the Legal Aid Council of Nigeria. That opportunity afforded me to look at everything that has to do with oppression, imprisonment, incarceration in this country. 
I was the former chairman of Delta State Development and Property Authority in Delta. And I moved to become the former minister for state education, where within one year, I created 13 universities in Nigeria. But put it mildly, I'm a businessman more than being a politician. In my private life, as I speak to you today, I have engaged and I continuously engage over 6,000 youths in this area of Delta State with my two massive malls, the one at Deco Road and the one at PTI Road. I resonate as the first black man in the whole world to become or attain that coveted level of being an AKS member of Rotary. And with Rotary behind me, I have all that it takes to bring back investment. I have all that it takes to gainfully bring back all our lost industries that either to had left the state as a result of bad governance in the state. So I bring to you that when it comes to experience and how to run a government and a people, I must qualify for that job, and I thank you for that opportunity. Chief, you've got just one minute left. Okay. Um, I believe that with everything that has happened in our state today, unless we take it to the level where we resolve the problems that were caused by us and by ourselves, we'll be wasting our time. Delta cannot continue with a civil servant mentality. We need an entrepreneur and an expert in business to develop us, just like they are doing in Lagos, they are doing in Ogun. We cannot cosmetically bring Delta back to where we are, if anything. And Chief Kenneth Baggy, time is up. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Interestingly, while the debate formally started a while ago, um, we just got uh, a letter from the People's Democratic Party, which I will take time to read in course of the debate. Uh, we also had a letter written by the uh, all pro the political party, All Progressive Congress, both letters explaining why their candidates uh, are unable to be at this event. And we will take time to read the letters and appropriately respond to them. What definite plans do you have to attract the kind of funds, investment, and models that will Ensure that they, re they ensure that the infrastructural deficit in Delta State is addressed. In addition to the fact that Delta State has a large swath of rural areas that are not connected to the internet, that are not connected with roads, especially in rural areas, what definite plans do you have for infrastructural and rural development of Delta State? The question, so starting with Chief Great Ogwaru, you have your two minutes. Well, um, in terms of infrastructural, infrastructural development, we have identified that um, revenue generating assets in Delta State are just not there. Therefore, we have come with a concluding, or a con to the conclusion that what needs to be done is to invest in critical areas areas in which the state has comparative advantage to produce, i.e. in the oil and gas sector, in agriculture. And that investment in, in these critical areas will actually lead to infrastructural, fiscal infrastructural development. But I also want to say that um, when we talk about infrastructural development, we believe that the best infrastructural development is the investment you have in the human resources portfolio because that investment is able to regenerate investments. So investing in critical areas like in the oil and gas, in the marine sector, in agriculture, in human capital development, we think that the road to infrastructural development is clear. But precisely, we're looking at modular refineries, we're looking at investment in with marine ocean going vessels, we're looking at making sure that our agricultural sector 
is mechanized. And when that is done, the infrastructural requirements that, that you need will make this a better place for Delta Your State. Your two minutes is Thank up, you. Chief Oboru. Next, we have Deacon Pella. No hand claps, please. All right. Um, infrastructural deficit. The angle I'm like, I like to look at it from, besides what we will do as a state, is to attract private sector investment. And one major plan we have to do that is our plan to develop 10 new cities across Delta. 10 new cities that are linked by multimodal transport. 10 new cities that are expected to attract investments because they will be, it will be visionary to build those 10 new cities, one in each federal constituency. And those cities will have tourist destinations, they would have um, um, internet connectivity, they will have power, 24 hour power, but using the concept of distributed generation. The idea is that when you have places that you can easily go to, to plug in, for example, you have central sewage in those cities. Someone can easily come to build a skyscraper there. So the thing we will do is start with those 10 cities and the kinds of investments that will come in, private sector investments will enable us to build them and enable us to connect them. Those cities will be built in largely the rural areas of Delta. That way we will- Dick Impella, you are talking about creating 10 cities and yes. your two minutes is up. up. Thank you. Now we go next to Chief Kenneth Baggy of the Social Democratic Party. Chief Kenneth Baggy, your two minutes starts now. Thank you very much. Delta State infrastructurally has stopped any development since 1999 to date. 